Hi there and welcome. I just finished to tune this flute here that you just heard. And uh, this time I documented it with a video. And if you're interested in how to tune flutes, Bansuri flutes by yourself, just stick to us. So uh, this is what this flute sounds now after tuning. Prior, it sounded like that. What you need for tuning flutes is actually nothing more than sandpaper. But I cut them in pieces like this. And, um, and then to make uh, the job more efficient, <coughs> I use uh, pens of different sizes and then to apply it like this. So this way you can use have a little bit more efficiency and you need to remove quite a lot that you will have results. Of course, uh, on it's kind of self-explanatory that on Bonzuris you can, if you do not want to have any special thing you make a touch, you can only open the holes. So you can only tune up, you cannot tune down. So that uh, need to be considered and also the holes will be bigger after you tune them. But as you can see on these two actually, so this is how it came from the flute maker and this one was just looking quite the same. My holes now became quite bigger. And uh, I personally don't bother with that. Um, I have no problem at all to close them still. And actually the opposite, I enjoy bigger holes because they have an effect on the sound. Uh, it opens up the sound. And also when you want to go for half notes, <laughs> I think that feels better. Um, there's a better flexibility and also for the indie music for the meads. So I show you how this flute sounds now without touching it. Before we change anything, I want to mention, I mean, this is not badly tuned, um, but it works mainly for uh, this root note as a saw, what, they, what we use in Hindustani music. And as far as I figured out so far, I cannot tell that precisely, um, but I don't actually know what theoretically the most of the flute makers are going for, but I assume the ga is always very low, which is in correlation with our just intonation ga, the major third. And the equal temperate is quite significantly higher. I will share the numbers. Uh, just follow the link in the description. I might uh, um, um, publish those, um, the, the, the theoretical background on that uh, on my website. Um, so just for now to know that the gar is lower than the equal temperament as well as the knee, the seventh of when you have compared to this root note, which is now an E flat. So this is also quite low. So this is, I think is intentional and is not meant to be played in 12 keys, what we want in Western music, but also it has a disadvantage for Indian music as well, because then you can only play raras, which has, when you have the shudga, which has the smaller, the, the shudga number one. If you need the shudga number two, you have an, quite an effort to pull that up. So I think even, and especially in the sake of playing, being able to play all ragas on the same flute, uh, it's not too bad to have an equal temporal tuning because this is in the middle of these two um, swaras of the Indian music when you take the 22 shruti system. So therefore I stopped to bother around. Uh, I was concerned about it for a very long time, about equal temporal and that this the tuning does not really match um, the Indian music, which I think is totally true. And with the piano in Indian music or something like that, that doesn't really work well. But on the flute, it's a little bit different because we have the ability to bend quite easily, which is at the same time the challenge because that's why we need to practice so hard to get the intonation well. And before we carry on, I will pull up a tuner here. And I show you also my favorite one. That's the sound corset metronome tuner. I like this one especially because you have that graph down there. So you can you see my mouse? That's here. So whenever you play a note, it draws this line. I 
like that. So you can really see how stable your tone is. So it's a very good tool also for practicing stable notes. So the first thing I, I do is to find out which one is the relative highest note. So we'll just go through the planes for us. And by the way, this is a, a, a flute with a par hole here. So not only those six, but over the six flute uh, ones, so it's just the same thing. Just here, I have to close this hole if I want to have that. But there's a par. So this one is so far the highest, or even the saw. And the last one, if I close the last hole here. So that's very classical, that the knee seems to be quite low, and the, the gré and the tiframar also. What about this one, the special one here? And this one is quite high. So. So I would say my first step is to bring all of them to the level of this 444 calibration. And then if I want, um, and everything is in tune, I want still to open up the sound, uh, I can still open these holes, but not in this direction, just in the other direction. So this will not affect the pitch so much, but the open sound. So um, I start, and uh, well, this is not, uh, I'm not a flute maker, by the way, so this is not really official. <laughs> but this is just sharing my own experience uh, that I got so far. Um, I will start with those who are furthest away. And then one more important note. Uh, it is really tricky to measure the, uh, the, the intonation. And maybe you saw already, that's why I put the, um, the tuner on screen there. It is not very precise, this measurement. You need to do this again and again from different angles. And to come to very carefully to a conclusion, I take a lot of time actually tuning these flutes, and I go slowly because you cannot undo what you have done. Um, I'm going to take out um, some material here. Um, so when you you really need to try to blow steady and not change while you look at the tuner, this is very difficult because the reaction of the intonation is so subtle. Uh, and usually, as soon as you look to the tuner, immediately will adjust. So there is, for me, it's not much of a point if you go like. Ta ta, it's in tune because you play this long note and you will adjust to that level. So, what I do then is. Try to close your ears and try not to look at this result there. And then also the whole thing changes because of the temperature. The longer you blow, the more the temperature changes. I will re recalibrate that to 446 or something later on. Um, but the ratio between the two is the, the interesting thing. So, and this indicates, yeah, the Re is a little bit higher than the Sa, but not so significant. So, that's why I won't touch that now. But what about the others? Yeah, now this shows plus 12 at the moment. And this significantly lower. And this one also. So that I would call a more clear measure uh, um, result. When I go from low to high and from high to low, both t in both ways, it shows that this um, Tiframar in the Hindustani system is significantly relative higher than the Re. So I will start with those two notes to bring them up and not higher than that. And let's see the lowest. It 
guitar might even be okay, but the knee, significantly low. And the power's even higher. Also in the higher octave. So maybe... This, now this pa and this re, or the C, or the F, if you think in Western terms already, uh, this might be our landmark. So I will not touch this one, which means the hole which you close when you play the sa. This one gives us the re, so this one I won't touch at the moment. And the, uh, the lowest one, this one, I will also not touch at the moment. Later on, if you want to tune up this one here, by the way, there's another method that I found. Why not? You can shorten the column. Ta-ta! This way. Just cave in here. You don't need to cut the flute. You can also use the sandpaper to cave in here. Just like a hole, it has a similar purpose. So this way, uh, you tune the note which comes when you close all the holes till here. All right. So, let's get started. So, what did I say? Gaunt. Tiframa, gaunt, tiframa, need to go up, and the knee. So, before I go to sandpaper the hole itself, I used to sandpaper the edge around because this will prevent uh, splices on the skin. So, like this. So, this hole is to raise the knee. In the end, they used to become the largest holes always, as you can see on, on that one. And I had it on many other flutes as well. So the knee hole is the significant highest. And there you might find the limits for your fingers. Okay, now the main task. So, I wrap this around a pen. And the way to enlarge the holes. First of all, I have th different sizes of pens because in the beginning the holes are a little bit smaller. And then I will start go for enlarging it mainly in this direction to come up with the, with the tuning. So, and this I will monitor with the tuner. So you see that difference, so that's the first one we want to make kind of even. So now there's a lot of work to do, like this. From this little bit, you can see already that we're coming closer. Still way to go, but this little bit gave that much of a result already. So I will just do this until all of them are just on a level, relatively, uh, taking the, uh, using the tuner, which shows me the equal temperate, uh, which I discussed earlier, that I consider the ideal if you want to have a flute where you can play anything on it. Um, and yeah, this will take me a while, so uh, we'll catch up on another part of the video. And let's see how that flute will sound afterwards. <laughs>